Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to the Messy Bench. Well, every so often I get a legitimate offer to review a product, and I do pass many of them up. Do I really want to review yet another multimeter? But sometimes something interesting comes along, and this time this company, Fnersi, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, they offered uh, a selection of their products to review, and I decided to go with this tablet oscilloscope. People ask me, you know, since I play a lot with audio electronics, so what kind of scope should I use? I don't have a lot of money. I can't afford a nicer scope. I can't afford this scope. Somebody gave it to me, so that's the reason I have that scope. But anyhow, will one of these super budget type scopes be any good? You know, obviously they're going to have their drawbacks. They're not going to be as feature packed as one of these scopes. But are they good enough to use for tinkering in audio? And I think you really need some sort of oscilloscope on the bench. It's one of these necessary tools if you're playing around with signals and, you know, monkeying around with amplifiers and things like that. So, yeah, I'm going to review this thing. And, like I always say, I tell it like it is. If I don't like it, I'll say it. You know, one time Banggood sent me something. I, I think I reviewed a Class D amp and... It wasn't so good, and I said so, and, well, I, I haven't ever heard back from them for a review offer, so, well, that's just the way it is. Okay, well, enough yakking. Let's talk about this scope. So we have a two-channel oscilloscope. I am leaving this masking on. There's some bubbles, that, so there's nothing wrong with it. You know, on this bench, things get bumped around, and I think it's better just to leave the protection on there. So, it claims to be 100 megahertz, 1 giga samples. Really, the only thing on it, you know, it's a, there's a stand on the back here. The only interesting thing here is the top, where you have your connectors for the two channels little contact point for the one kilohertz square wave to compensate your probes USB-C charging port with indicators and I'm not sure what all the LEDs are about when it's charging the red ones on and when it's done the green one turns on I guess it's over it's done charging yeah uh, the uh, button there is just a power button. Out of the box it comes with two 1 and 10x switchable probes which you want to calibrate right out of the box. The instruction manual seems well enough written to me. I'm not going to sit here and leaf through that. Got enough to get through here. The probes come with accessories, little color ring bands and caps and things. And this is kind of nice. It also included a 100x probe. That is very nice. And it has a USB cable and a charger. So yeah, like I said, it is battery powered. And that's kind of handy because it isolates the scope system ground with earth ground. You know, a scope like this these grounds are connected to the ground pin on the power plug. So, there are certain situations where it is nice to be isolated. Are we working here? Testing one, two, three. Okay, so I'm just going to fire this thing up. Run through the menus and things here real quick. See how quick it boots. Hey, there we go. It's already up. Uh, let's hit the auto set button here. You can hear the relays click. So I have it connected to the field tech. I'm triggering off of this channel. This one's crawling because I 
purposely change the frequency a little bit. Change the frequency and make it crawl. Give something uh, more exciting to look at, I guess. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. Very easy to use this thing. Change the time base. Just tap on the right. Longer time base on the left. So that's pretty handy. It's quick to use. Just tap. Here's the menu. System settings. So you can adjust the brightnesses. Calibration. XY display. Picture views and waveform views. You can save pictures and waveforms. You just hit one of these buttons on the side. So let's say we want to view one of the pictures. So here's some stuff I saved. One of these blood jewelry, whatever. I'm just a simple Southern Ohio boy. I don't know how you pronounce it, but there's one of those XY mode things. So yeah, that's kind of handy. And you hit this to back out of it. You have your run stop. See, I don't know why you just can't hit that. You hit it over here on the side to run stop. And I probably should mention to change the voltage, you hit control. Probably be nice to move this wire out of the way. So to change the uh, vertical scale here, you just tap these buttons. Very quick and easy to use. Very intuitive. These are your channel controls. Just hit that. There's a few options there. You can turn it off. Has it FFT, AC or DC coupling, and whatever probe mode you're in. So let's take a look at the FFT. So if I turn that on, go out, you get a little FFT thing there. It's kind of a token gesture. If we change to a square wave... There you can see all the harmonics associated with the square wave, and you can zoom in. But, you know, there's no indicators. It's kind of just a little token visual thing there. The move fast button, move slow, move fast. That's your uh, finger gestures on the touch screen. So you can move the waveforms around wherever you want them. And see, it moves with my finger in fast mode, and in slow mode... See how it's much slower, so you can precisely adjust cursors and where you want the waveform and things like that. Here's your trigger options, just basic triggering options. Normally it automatically goes to the middle of the waveform, that's what the one, the 50% uh, setting is. And you can go in and turn that off if you don't want it. That allow you to move the triggering position where you want it but I'll leave that alone because it you know it's fine for most of the uses I have so on the side menu we already went through a few things you have your run and stop auto set we did already you have cursors so you can measure you know waveforms you can check the frequency it'll tell you the time and the frequency and you also have what they call V or voltage cursors so you can uh, measure a uh, waveform. That's where the move fast and slow gesture setting comes in. So you can precisely set these cursors. So yeah, that's kind of handy. The measure button here, that sets these readouts on the bottom. So you just pick what you want each channel to show. And it displays it down at the bottom. Okay, so now let's look more at some of the capabilities of the scope. On the y-axis, it goes down to 50 millivolts per division and up to 5 volts per division. So if you need more than that, you'll have to switch in the 10x on the probe or use the 100x probe. In other words, 40 volts peak to peak in 1x mode. So I turned it down to the most sensitive level. And it seems to have some sort of gate where it, it blocks out noise. And it doesn't detect a signal below a certain threshold. So I turn up the field tech. And see if, if I go below, 
probably about 25 millivolts peak to peak it just it doesn't detect it anymore so yeah it kind of hides the noise that way but you're you know with really small signals it might be an issue if you're trying to see a, a very small signal seems to measure everything just fine I have it set for 8.2 kilohertz and that's what it's showing so one volt peak to peak signal but one issue you have to watch out for with these cheaper scopes is the aliasing the uh, method they use to display the signals you, know, you can see here you get these weird effects and I stop that and, you know that's not the signal it's just the aliasing so make sure you zoom in on it by quickening the time base make sure you're actually looking at your signal because some aliasing will make this signal show at a very low frequency and you think you're looking at a lower frequency signal when it's actually a much higher frequency signal because of the effects of aliasing so just be cognizant of that and you'll be okay okay since I'm measuring higher frequency signals now I switched into 10x mode I have the field tech set for 8 megahertz and 3 volts and it's pretty much measuring that so I'll crank it up now the field tech does roll off at higher frequencies yeah around 16 megahertz it'll start rolling off as you can see here now unfortunately I don't have the tools to measure this thing out to 100 megahertz However, I've heard in other reviews that this scope really doesn't go that far. That's not of prime importance to me. Though sometimes I can see oscillations in audio amplifiers of several megahertz. I'm kind of curious of what this thing does at high frequencies. Like I said, I don't have proper test equipment for that, but I do have this FM transmitter clipped to its antenna. I have a short lead that goes into an RF amplifier, something I cobbled together a couple years ago. Let's just say that it does extend the signal. I can get a signal down the road, which is outside the 200 foot limit. Let's just say that it's just for experimentation that I don't actually use it for that. <laughs> but, um,. Yeah, it's using a 2N5770 transistor. So I'll turn on the uh, transmitter there. It's at 88.3 megahertz. Transmitter is powered by a 9 volt battery. And I'll turn that on. You can see the signal comes up. It's, uh, it's actually measuring it pretty close now it jumps around a bit but I don't have a 50 ohm terminator I just have to run with what I got and let's see let's go to 107.7 that's over it's uh, advertised that's not reading that correctly but I'm still getting a signal. So yeah, you can still see a signal, but I wouldn't trust the frequency reading and the amplitude reading. Yeah, I'm just kind of playing around here. You get all these uh, aliasing effects. See, I went down and now it looks like a lower frequency sine wave of 1.6 megahertz. But if I go up one, see... It's just kind of an aliasing effect you're seeing there. So, yeah, I wouldn't trust this thing at higher frequencies. But at least you can see a signal. Plugged it into my main scope. I was just curious to see. It does have a proper 50 ohm terminator mode. You can turn that on and off. I turn the amp off. You can see uh, yeah, significant amplification out of the little RF amp there. So what do I think about this little scope? I actually kind of like it. The touch screen is responsive. 
The menus are simple and intuitive. I think somebody just getting into electronics can understand everything and use it pretty easy. Being on battery power, like I say, you're going to get the isolation from grounds, which can be useful in some cases. You can take it anywhere. It's kind of nice that they supply the 100X probe as well. And all in all, it's not too expensive. On the negative side, though it is nice that they recessed the connectors, helps protect them, but you know, it's kind of hard to get the probe off. You know, it's not too bad getting it on, but you know, there's not a lot of room there for your fingers to work. So, you know, that's one thing. Is it really a 100 megahertz scope? Well, from what I see, I don't think so. But still, for the price, if it really is a 30 megahertz scope, well, that's fine by me. Though I wish manufacturers would stop lying on specs. Just call it what it is. You'll get less criticism kickback from that. Although you can still see signals at higher frequencies, I just wouldn't trust the readout or what you're seeing because of the aliasing effects. And speaking of aliasing, which is an unfortunate property of inexpensive oscilloscopes, you want to crank up the time base to make sure you're actually seeing the waveform and, like I say, not some sort of aliasing artifact. So would I recommend this for the money? Well, sure, I think it's a decent little scope, given its size and portability. It doesn't take a lot of room up on the bench. Is there something better out there for the money? I don't know. Discuss it in the comments. And I'm going to leave it at that. Thanks for watching.